Okay. Uh, welcome everybody. Welcome to the session on uh, Amadeus OpenStack journey. What we're going to talk today is how Amadeus built an enterprise uh, cloud using VMware integrated OpenStack and NSX. So when we had this opportunity to come do a session here, we, we were kind of thinking what would be like a good way to tell our experience with OpenStack for, from VMware and NSX. So we, what we thought was would be good and valuable to the community was to share a good story, and this is the Amadeus story, of how an enterprise is using uh, OpenStack and VMware to run a business critical application on, on VMware infrastructure. So what we really, the way we structured this uh, whole presentation is around how an organization took a, a key set of business drivers, turned them into requirements, and how that requirement actually translated into a product architecture, and how they were able to use this set of technologies to meet their business goals. Uh, that, that's probably the scope of the session, right? A uh, quick introduction, my name is Sai, Sai Chaitanya. I'm a product manager on the NSX team, and I'd like Arthur to introduce himself. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm Arthur Knopper from Amadeus. Cool. Introducing VMware integrated OpenStack with Amadeus. Cool. So, uh, that's, that's, that's the agenda that we have in the mind, and I'll actually kind of step back and let Arthur drive, because he's been very, very closely involved in this whole uh, journey for Amadeus with OpenStack. Okay, thank you, Sai. Mm -hmm. um, before we dive into uh, VMware Integrated OpenStack or our private uh, enterprise cloud solution, um, a bit about Amadeus. Um, we are a service provider to the travel industry, so um, if, you, if you're booking a flight via kayak, Expedia or, or something like that, it's likely that you book it via us. Um, so we provide flight management, departure control, uh, reservation ticketing uh, for airlines, for hotels, cars, rails. Um, we make about 3 billion uh, euros revenue a year. We are an internationally located company, so we are in um, Nice, uh, where our research and development is. Uh, our data center is in Munich, uh, or close to Munich. Headquarters are in Spain. We have sites in Miami, Boston, Sydney, Bangalore, London. Um, business model, we get a transaction fee in case there is a booking. Um, we do about half a billion transactions per day, about uh, 10,000 requests per second and we have a 99.99% .99 SLA uptime. So B2P knows us, public doesn't know us, but um, so in this world, in the travel world, we are known. Um, what, what were the business drivers um, for, for our undertaking to get to a private cloud, to, to an enterprise cloud? The internal, uh, there were internal drivers, there were external drivers. Internal drivers, um, it's basically part of our digital transformation or our digital roadmap. How do we respond um, to um, uh, what we need to do beyond compute virtualization? Um, that was one question which we had to answer. So how do we uh, provide uh, resources and services quicker to our end, end users? How do we uh, provide infrastructure as a service? Um, how do we cater for a uh, CI CD pipe, uh, which is uh, used by DevOps and R&D, um, which is basically going in parallel to what we do uh, with um, infrastructure as a service, and it's exploiting features of what uh, we can um, provide with OpenStack. And uh, also we wanted to provide a platform for our next-gen cloud-native applications. So that's the internal drivers. Um, we had immediate uh, drivers from, um, from, yeah, from customers who came to us um, um, and said, okay, yes, uh, you're good to provide uh, um, our next-gen uh, services, um, but they have a very high SLA. They have a SLA of five nines, and uh, then we said, okay, how can we do that? 
we have to do it um, with a different approach on how the applications are built and how the applications uh, behave. Uh, they have to be fault tolerant um, to hardware failures and uh, in turn it would require uh, then an, an, a platform which is like OpenStack infrastructure as a service. Um, what, we, what we will do is we will uh, and have already two data, data centers in, in the US, on, in Santa Clara in California and in Ashburn, Virginia. Uh, we are currently doing um, user acceptance test testing with the customer and we go live in production in January next year. So the whole undertaking started off in June last year and now we are at the stage to do UAT. Um, so the requirements for the business, it's in general, um, we have to have a higher turnover. We have to be uh, more satisfactory to our end users. They want services, resources now. They don't want it in, in, in weeks or months. They want it now. Um, and also um, the, the, the CICD requirement of, um, of R&D and uh, the uptime, that that's was the business requirement. I just mentioned it before. Um, technically, how did we, uh, what, was the, what were the requirements here? Um, getting to fault resilient application architecture, automatic recovery on fault, starting up new what we call isolation zones, over availability zones in case of failure. Um, we are using container-based technology, so we, we are using Kubernetes um, wrapped into OpenShift. And um, yeah, the, the whole thing is uh, basically uh, model driven. So you can uh, put down your application uh, topology in heat templates or in the future in Terraform uh, templates and deploy your environment uh, onto uh, your platform, uh, make changes to it in a, in a, in a standardized and automated manner. Um, this is uh, this is a picture of the of the layers we have the the lower half the the bluish bit. Uh, what you can see here is um, uh, VMware integrated OpenStack. Um, basically, this bit here. Um, we're using VMware hypervisors like um, ESX um, for compute, NSX for network, uh, vSAN for data stores. Um, vSphere managed by vCenter. Um, we also are using VMware technology to operate the thing. So we're using as the log manager of all uh, this infrastructure, um, which is called LogInsight. And we're using uh, operational dashboards also from VMware. So all this lower layer here is basically a VMware provided solution. Um, on top, um, this, this can be considered as the pass layer. This is, this is a distro of uh, open source components which are compiled by our R&D into what, what we call Amadeus Cloud Services. So we have an artifactory. We have, uh, we're using um, for registry of, of uh, services, we're using console. Um, for building containers, we're using OpenShift uh, Kubernetes. We have database as a service. We have uh, our own instrumentation uh, for the application. So this is all um, of this is all part of the um, CI/CD pipe and the application bit, platform as a service. And the lower bit, this is what we're talking about here. This is VMware integrated OpenStack. Um, the way this is put down, we have. Um, a topology, we have um, four hosts where all the management, uh, the control plane is hosted. So we are O itself. Uh, we have vCenter running there. We have NSX running there. We have uh, our monitoring like LogInsight and uh, VROPS running there. And we have the data plane, which is the payload cluster. Uh, we have about 30, oops, uh, we have about 30, three of those 
and uh, we have three edge clusters. So that's, that's how the lower bit you saw here before, um, how this is distributed. Um, then, okay, when, when, we, when we look, what, what does that mean for a, for a developer? Um, so a developer, if he, if he has to make a change, he, he clones a project, uh, he tests on his, uh, on his laptop, um, he um, commits um, to stash, he um, creates a pull request, he builds the change, and um, at, the, at the point when, for instance, an, uh, a topology change is required to the application, at this point in time, he is basically independent from what he used to be. He doesn't need to uh, call ops anymore, a sysadmin or a network guy or firewall guy. He does it, uh, basically does it himself. So that's, that's a huge advantage. And in the future, um, which, which we, are, we are not at this stage yet, but what we want to do is um, the, the QA, the regression testing, and the further push into um, a user acceptance test phase or a production phase, this will be uh, automated as well. And this will be handled by DevOps. Um, what, what we are using um, for um, yeah, getting the application topology together is a, is a set of modular heat templates, YAML files, where we basically have a, a, a huge uh, integration stack which is offering everything we have. So um, basically any type of cluster which is available in our environment, uh, networks, subnets, distributed routers, firewalls, this is all put down in, uh, in this integration stack uh, whereupon uh, Amadeus specific um, rules, for instance, um, permissive or restrictive um, rules for firewalls are in, in, in individual YAML files or heat files. This is then offered to, to DevOps and they take the elements they need to build the application topology. And I mean, if you, if you think, okay, what, what, what we do now, we basically create a project on OpenStack with a given quota. And then uh, an end user can deploy using these uh, um, YAML files or this heat templates, its entire application topology, the, the number of networks it has, well, well the networks it has uh, connected to databases and uh, payload servers, firewalls, etc. cetera. Um, and he can deploy this, uh, run it against heat, and this takes, in our case, for about 50 minutes. So the project creation itself is a matter of seconds. The deployment of the application topology of the stack, it's a matter of, of, of uh, 50 minutes, the application deployment included. So that's 50 minutes. If you compare that to what we used to do before, um, okay, you have to have a business case, you have, you have this as well. Then you uh, purge a service, you get it in, you get it in the house, you cable it up, you rack it up, uh, you put an OS on it, uh, you put a network on it, uh, you set up the firewall, etc. And that is a matter of, of weeks and months in our case. And uh, with, uh, with the solution we have at hand at the moment, this bit has already uh, been significantly reduced, literally down to 50 minutes, which is, which is quite good. Um, I mentioned before the, 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 this one customer requirement, which was um, yeah, to, to have an SLA of five nines, um, where, where again uh, our R&D people said, okay, we have, to, we have to use a different type of technology. What we, what we are doing now is um, we are using a, a circuit, so-called circuit breaker technology from, um, Netflix, I don't know if you know that, which is um, built on dependency graphs. And in case of fault in one, what we call isolation zone, isolation zone, this is just stopped and uh, built a new onto another availability zone. So an isolation zone is uh, basically 
all the elements you need to have uh, an application running. So it's, it's a network, it's, it's a payload, it's data stores. And in case there's a failure uh, detected by our, by our instrumentation, it's just shut down. And as a next step, it will be uh, started a new um, on, on ESX, ESX hosts which are available. Um, when we looked, okay, when we, when we looked at this requirement uh, initially coming from the customer, we said, okay, can, can we do this in, uh, by a public provider? Can we even do it in a public cloud? Uh, but uh, granting this very high SLA, um, the cost for it, um, even if people were willing to do it, um, was 40% higher than uh, doing it ourselves. We also looked at uh, multiple, um, well, open, OpenStack or not OpenStack was never, re never really so much a question for, for us. So we looked at Mirantis, we looked at Red Hat, so we looked at uh, various distributions and um, we in the end decided then to, to go with VMware. Uh, I have another slide on this because we have a long-standing relationship and um, some other considerations. But it's not that, uh, what I'm trying to say here is, it's not that other distributions are bad. It's, it's, it, it was just a, a, a fit in our case. Um, we're also using SN, uh, NSX uh, as our SDN. Um, in my context, this is a bit of a byproduct because um, we, we are also independent from that. We're also looking at the next-gen uh, network in our data center, um, how it would like. We had a proof of concept with Arista, Palo Alto, VMware using NSX. And as such, we also used it uh, um, in, in, this, in this implementation. Um, we are using some features of, um, uh, of NSX uh, also in this cloud context. We're using, for instance, distributed logical routing which uh, where we saw immediate benefits in, in uh, reducing east west traffic, collateral calls, because basically you stay on, your, on the same ESX host or you go via, via VXLAN to, to, to another ESX host and you don't go to the edge anymore with this implementation. Um, other than that, I don't know if you want to talk about uh, benefits of uh, NSX or what. Sure, what so the key, key, key feature here is uh, distributed logical routing. So distributed logical routing is a feature where you push the routing function to every hypervisor. So if you have two VMs that are on two different networks, what happened in the past was all traffic used to go all the way to like an upstream router and then come back to the host. So if you have like a, for, a, for a simple example like a web VM and an app VM, so the traffic would always hairpin to some physical router, right? So, and with the case of NSX, the routing function is pushed down closest to the VM. So if two VMs are like, if a web VM and an app VM are on the same ESX host, the traffic never leaves the host. So what happens as a byproduct of that is uh, very good uh, improvements in performance and which is what uh, Arthur is explaining right now. So distributed routing is one function which we kind of push down to the host and kind of distribute it. And similar functions are distributed firewall, which, which, is, which is the capability to use OpenStack security groups and go implement them as a stateful firewall on every hypervisor. So in addition to that, I'll just kind of touch base on the last point there, is basically NSX has the ability to extend logical networks across data centers. And I think that's a very, very powerful future and it's been part of your roadmap where you can do disaster recovery across uh, data centers. Right, right. I and mean, yes, I mean, we did do a proof of concept where we did do a switch between data centers using NSX. So. But in this context, that's, that was not the main sure. uh, point. Uh, but why, why did we use uh, VMware? I mean, if you, if you remember this talk from, uh, from this morning, um, from I think the lady from Gartner talked about uh, this bimodular IT, where you have uh, your critical services managed in an, in an ITIL fashion, ITIL type of way, and where, you, uh, where your DevOps uh, type of new approach uh, would be would be handled um, in in the cloud, and in our case, um, 
and, and also, if you remember what, what AT&T AT uh, has done at a, at a very large scale, um, they, they must have a, a quite qualified uh, workforce and, and not only two or three people, but many. Otherwise, they wouldn't be able to pull this through and pull this off. In our case, um, we are still pretty much concentrating on, on our mission critical services. I mentioned before departure control, etc. So if this is, um, I mean, if this is, if this was not working, uh, the air traffic would stand still, literally. So uh, we have to be there really cautious, uh, which also means that we don't have so much uh, personnel or qualifi qualified personnel available um, to to implement uh, by ourselves solely by ourselves. Um, uh, something like a, an enterprise cloud. So that's, that was one reason why we partnered up with VMware, who are long-standing partners with us anyway. So we have, um, I think since 2000, I don't know, since over 10 years, we have uh, mm -hmm. uh, we're basically running uh, our workloads on, on vSphere. So um, that that was a one, one decisive factor. Also that we get, um, basically all hypervisors from VMware, the ones we know, the, the, the new ones like uh, NSX and vSAN, plus um, we have um, also the, the operability uh, delivered by VMware, like uh, the log manager and, and the operational dashboards. Um, we, so that's, that's why mainly why we decided for, for VMware. We came up with a design. We had this design counterchecked by by a competitor, really by by Mirantis, and um, the design we came up uh, in in um, in the U.S. in the two sites in the U.S. and also the one uh, cloud we have in Munich was approved as as a as a valid solution. Um, so. How did we do this? Um, we didn't, I mean, we, how shall I say, we were pretty much under pressure um, um, to deliver something uh, with, with, a, with a customer constraint, the cust customer um, commitment dates in the back. Um, so like, like I said, in June last year, we started off with VIO 1.0, that was on Icehouse. Um, then uh, until, end of the year over, over Xmas, actually, we, uh, we integrated VIO 2.0.1, which is on Kilo, which also had a lot of bug fixes we found in the meantime uh, incorporated. Um, that was our, our blueprint, uh, and this is what we uh, did implement here in the US and also in our production cloud in, in Munich. And the next things we are now looking at is uh, stability, operability, and performance. So this is this is roughly the type of phases um, we we are undergoing. Um, mentioned already, yeah, we started off with 1.0 ice, ice house. We found about 27 bucks, and mainly when this this happened, mainly when people were uh, creating and deleting stacks, and um, we cannot say that, the, that there is a specific pattern. We cannot say, oh, this is all on VIO or all on NSX or all on OpenStack. It was um, everywhere. We had NSX bugs, we had VIO plugin bugs, we had minor OpenStack bugs, um, we had uh, ambiguous stack configurations, we had insufficient underlying hardware, meaning not enough capacity, running with one edge, o edge host only at one time, for instance, at one point in time. So um, important point is we, we, we cannot say that there was uh, just one thing to look at, it was many. Um, but the, as far as the software is concerned, uh, VIO and NSX, that was all consolidated. And uh, we, are, we can say, I can say that we are really in a stable situation since then, uh, since we loaded VIO 2.0.2. .2. For the stakeholders, who, who, who are the people working on this? Um, it's tiny, really. I mean, the, the, the 
Boris von Mirante said uh, there is this enthousi enthusiastic uh, sysadmin, VMware sysadmin. We have this one guy. We have um, a real good network guy. We have a guy who understands Puppet, Ansible, uh, YAML files. He understands cloud. Um, we have a regular Linux sysadmin, and uh, this is about it. So these five people together with VMware um, basically built the, the, this, this lower layer you saw before. The consumers of what we, um, yeah, of this cloud uh, are a bit bigger. So we have a, a DevOps team uh, of 12 who are doing the application change management, if you wish. And we have about 70 guys who are composing, building this Amadeus cloud service, this, this CI CD pipe with, with, with the artifactory and service registry and the building the containers, deploying the containers. Um, what we have, as, as I said before, we have about uh, 40 hypervisors, uh, three for the edge, four for the control plane, and 33 for compute. In production, we will have five racks per site uh, with 16 blades for compute on one rack, one for uh, Hadoop and one for Oracle, and two for Couchbase. This is, this is our specific setup. Um, two management servers and three edge servers. So, and we will be looking at approximately 1,400 instances, VMs. Uh, best practices. Um, the way we did it, we were pretty much driven by external circumstances, so to speak. Um, I think it would be prudent if you develop a cloud strategy, which is uh, where you would consider what, what is your digital roadmap? Um, which workloads do you want to put in, in the cloud? And would, would these workloads have to undergo a transformation of the application itself? Or would you place them one to one? Uh, what, what is your region concept? Would you be, would you be globally distributed? Would, uh, things like that. And uh, obviously you also have to understand what, what, what your shop is in terms of this bimodular IT. Then uh, I would start with, uh, and this is what we did, just, just use the things you really need. So um, after all, what do you need? You need compute uh, storage network uh, security. So uh, we have Nova, we have Neutron, we have uh, Cinder, we have um, Keystone, we have Glance obviously for the, for the image, images and we have Heat for the orchestration. We're looking at um, chargeback in the future, so we might uh, use Silometer. But um, at the start, don't, don't, uh, don't overcomplicate things. Just need, use what you need, what you really need. And maybe it's not so good to start with, a, uh, yeah, with project dependencies in, in, in your back, because then you're lacking of really preparing and thinking of uh, how you want to build out your, your or implement your, build and implement your strategy. Uh, what we are going to do as next steps is um, we're gonna do uh, quota management, recharge to business units, supply pool management, uh, onboarding, all these things. Uh, we further have to improve our end-to-end -end operability. So, I mean, often if you have a problem, what do you do? You look at uh, you look at the Newton database, you, you, uh, you look at NSX, then you look at vCenter, then you look at log Insight, and um, to integrate that, uh, that's, that's a bit of a challenge, and this is where we're working together with VMware as well. And we're looking at um, how we want to um, set out our regions. I mean, at the moment we have um, two regions, well, one, in on the, on one on the East Coast, one on the West Coast, and one in Munich, but we want to um, expand uh, to the greater Munich area or maybe within Germany so that we have more sites, that we have a, a, a true regional concept. So this is um, pretty much what I have to say. Should I sum it up? Sounds good. So what, 
So I kind of started the session by t telling that you know what we want to share with you a story of how an enterprise customer is running a business critical application on OpenStack, and Amadeus was one good story. So with being VMware, we get to see like a lot of customers doing OpenStack, right? Some of them go very well, some of them go reasonably well, and some of them don't do that well. What's kind of kind of really important for success with OpenStack is of having a clear driver for what you're trying to do and then translating that into clear requirements, right? So if you kind of go back, think through what this presentation was about, there is a net new application, a cloud native application. It was OpenShift in this case. And the cloud native application needs to be built in a highly resilient fashion, finance. And to do this, so that those are the clear business requirements, right? And the team was able to come up with a very nice architecture. And in this case, it was VIO and NSX to support this application. So. I think ha having those clear understanding of requirements and, and a clear driver is kind of very important for execution. And the second aspect that was also kind of very striking with, with, with this team was basically in, in the terms of how they structured their execution. They first started with a clear qualification, and then they went through like stabilizing the base platform before going ahead and trying to do something like stress performance. So when you have a very clear execution plan and kind of break it into phases, your chance of success up pretty higher. So I think that sums up pretty much our story for this uh, for this session, where we have like people running the so-called cloud native applications already in production on OpenStack, on VIO, and NSX. So at this point, I'd kind of open it up to any questions that you guys have. Do you want to take, go to the mic and? Thanks for your insights. Uh, my question is actually related to NSX story with OpenStack. Uh, how you guys are able to manage other networking uh, tools like NSX, or for example, there are some open source with which uh, OpenStack is working, like Open Daylight. How does the net other networking tools fit with OpenStack in your experience? So are you trying to manage NSX with OpenStack Neutron or with OpenStack in general? How does those two fit together. Well, we manage NSX with NSX. It's, it's part of this. So in this solution, what because what Amadeus has done is they've run OpenStack, which is VMware integrated OpenStack, and OpenStack obviously requires Neutron, right? In this, I mean, you, you can choose to do Nova networking or Neutron. So right. for their use case, they, they required Neutron, and the Neutron backend was provided by NSX in their case. It was completely provided by NSX. And the other key thing to kind of touch upon, complete upon your point was, uh, Arthur kind of spoke about those heat templates. So those heat templates captures the application blueprint, right? So it captures it both at the infrastructure level and that at the, at the application level. So what's you, important as part of, to kind of to tell is the heat template that they, they're using in day to day also captures the networking constructs. What that translates to is every developer cha change that gets done, it actually is actually tested in a manner that's actually it's going to be deployed in production. So it's tested with the same set of networks, same set of load balancers and routers. So that's that's to answer your question. Thank you. Okay. Hmm. Yep. Um, you mentioned you had 40 hypervisors. Are they all in one big cluster or multiple smaller clusters? No, they're, they're distinct clusters. Okay, and the second question, you mentioned vSAN. Is the storage all vSAN connected, or do you have any external storage, and what type of storage? Yeah, okay. What we ha okay, we have, um, three, okay, we have um, three distinct clusters. So one for the, for, for the control plane, for management. <coughs> there we have four, uh, a cluster of four. For the edge, we have a cluster of three. And the rest, in the, in the case of 40, is uh, 33 for, for the compute. So these are three distinct clusters. Um, for um, for Visan, Visan we are using on uh, only on the control plane, on the management cluster. What we're using um, for the data stores is local storage. So for for Couchbase, uh, Oracle, Hadoop, we are using local storage. So we created a flavor um, where when you specify the server type, you would automatically use local storage. And um, for um, for the for the compute, um, which which has very little um, need of of, 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 of of data store, we use uh, Tintree, Tintree shared storage. 
any more questions? NSX, are you using VXLAN or STT? VXLAN, yeah. It's is VXLAN. there a particular reason you're using VXLAN? Is it because you're using the distributed logical routing? Uh, so then, this the whole solution uses VXLAN. So we, when we in VIO and NS, uh, NSX, the whole network virtualization is provided by VXLAN. Okay. What was the what was the reason to choose VXLAN? Uh, so we, the product was kind of built with VXLAN because VXLAN. The NSX product has kind of been there in the market for more than three, three and a half years right now, right? Yeah. And at that point, almost like five years ago, there was a people were working on a draft, and the draft happened to be VXLAN, right? And the product was implemented with that draft. So okay. VXLAN is, is the standard that we all NSX deployments are running today. Uh, however, there's work like in upstream communities to work on next generation headers, and those are Geneve. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you for uh, taking time to attend this session. Thank you.